No. Ha! 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 Nah. Hmm. Nah, that's just all wrong. Ha! Wait. That's not even the right universe. I don't know. I guess I just need something blue. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Frank and today we are making a blue beetle helmet. Now, let me get out of the way and say I'm what some of you might call a fake fan. I don't really know much about this character and I really wasn't planning on making this helmet even though some people have requested in the comments for a couple years now. But then I saw that trailer and then I saw what this live action movie was aiming up to be. So I did a little bit of research on the character. I saw more clips from the movie. I saw this beautiful shot on Instagram of the helmet and I, I, knew, I knew it was time. Also, the first person to 3D model this buster sword from the trailer is getting a free YouTube video. I cannot wait to make this thing. Please, somebody model this. Unlike most of my stuff that uses 3D filament and plastic, this is gonna be using bottles of liquid resin. Now, this doesn't mean you can't follow this tutorial, print it on an FDM printer, sand it a little bit more, and then just do all the same stuff I'm about to do in the video. It just means I'm gonna have to sand a little bit less, and I'm using a much more expensive printer than usually the typical person has. So, follow along in this video, and you'll learn how to make your very own Blue Beetle helmet, and see how I made one of the sickest paint jobs I've ever done. But first up, the 3D files. Okay, so let's take a look at the 3D files for this build. We're gonna be using the DO3D Blue Beetle helmet files. Now, since I printed the helmet just a few days ago, they've gone and updated the files and they kind of went backwards, but I asked them to fix it. So these are the original files I had downloaded. These are the V1. And as you can see here, these little eye pieces, you can remove these from the faceplate. These actually print completely separately, which is very convenient for painting and it made it a lot easier to match everything and do it all at once. However, on their new file set, they just fused those eyelid lenses covers into the mask. Like I said, I messaged them on Instagram. They said they were gonna change it because I told them how much better this just makes it for printing. But the details on the V2 helmet do look a lot better and more accurate to what I see in this photo up here. Like there's a couple little things, little small noticeable differences but i don't think any of you guys you're gonna build it the same way that's what i'm trying to say also if you're using do3d files use this code right here fbt20 it gets you 20 percent off on anything on the website which is really cool so the mask itself is broken up really nice for fdm or resin printing and because the dome is smaller you don't need a massive resin printer to print this i think this will fit on something like a saturn or saturn 2 but in this case i'm going to be using a frozen Me sonic mega 8k what a name. So I can't really give you a big resin tutorial right now because I'm still learning resin printing myself, um, but it does use a good amount of material. It is a little more costly and you definitely need to use supports differently than you use with FDM printing. Um, it's just an odd program to manipulate. This is Chinubox Lite. There's other things like Lychee and I'm forgetting the names of the rest. But the program auto generates support. You can kind of move it around, position it however you want. The flatter you can make the part, the quicker it will print. It has nothing to do with the amount of material it's using. It's how tall and high the print is, which was really cool, but you also want to preserve the detail. So I'm moving the eyes at like a 45 degree angle. I'm generating um, heavy supports because I really want this to survive and spoiler alert, it survived. And then I'll look at the bottom and just kind of inspect where is it gonna start printing? Is there enough support for the initial first layer? As you move up through the print, you're gonna look for something called islands. Is anything trying to print in mid air? Like that is impossible to print. So far this looks good, but for just safety sake, I usually go and add a couple more supports just around the edge, just to make sure it's gonna survive. And hey, that looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. Let's go do the rest of the parts. So the eyes and the jaw are gonna take 23 hours. They're gonna use uh, less than half a bottle of resin. And I know some of you are probably screaming at me right now, like, no, turn it this way and position it that way in your supports. I do not have the uh, the proper knowledge to articulate why I'm doing this yet. I, like I said, I'm still learning resin printing. I'd rather the print survive and me use a little bit more material and do a couple things, maybe not as efficiently, but the print will survive. I'm okay with it. And uh, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna send this, so. Um, 
yeah, you do you. And I found this heavy support profile somewhere on Reddit and it's been working really nice for me. Um, I'll just scroll through so you can kind of click and you know read them and change it however you want. But it's been helping my prints survive a lot recently. It just uses some more material. The helmet itself and the jaw are too wide to lay flat on the build plate. So this is the best way I could really think of printing this. It will leave some scarring on the back of the helmet, but that is super easy to sand down and fill with some spot putty. Resin sands very, very, very easily. Just make sure you're wearing a respirator and being safe about it. And even though this looks like a lot more to print, it's only going to take one hour more than the jaw because of the height. I promise I have a video coming out explaining uh, basically resin printing for dummies. Um, I'm the dummy and I'm going to explain it as easy as possible to you guys. It's such a cool technology that I love using. It's just a little boring to watch, but man, are the results just unbeatable. So slice and position these however you want, whatever resin printer you're using, whatever FDM printer you're using, cut them, slice them, mix them, mass them, bop it, whatever you got to do. So we're going to go throw these on the resin printer. You're going to get to watch some really cool time-lapse footage of me taking them out of the resin printer and cleaning them and all of that stuff. So uh, yeah, I'm very excited to get this build started. So let's keep going. Okay, let's talk about this thing. I'm on the floor because it's on the floor. Uh, so this is the printer I'm going to be using for this project. This is the Frozen Sonic Mega 8K and it is a rather large format resin 3D printer. Now, Frozen isn't sponsoring this video. I wanted to make this helmet regardless, but they sent me this printer to use in some videos and test out. Now, I have a couple other large format 3D printers, but so far, by far, this was the easiest one to use and set up. It came packaged beautifully. I just, honestly, it took more time to unbox it than it did to set it up. Literally took it out of the box, turned it on, didn't have to level it. That was awesome. Leveling large resin printers is such a pain in the butt. I, I actually have some sitting there that I don't even want to touch. I got some print files ready, plugged them in, selected it, filled the vat and hit print. And that's it. I was able to get the blue beetle helmet printed in a little over two days with no issues. And as you'll see through this video, it came out beautiful. Right now, this thing's sitting on their website for about $2,200. And I don't know if they're going to be running any sales or discounts or anything like that. I will link it down below for you guys if you are interested in a large format resin printer. I'm not sure what the dimensions are offhand. I'll put them right here. It's probably in centimeters or inches, but that's how big it is. Now, I will be doing a dedicated review video on this this printer on my second channel eventually once I get a lot more prints out of it I'm currently printing um, some demon slayer swords so make sure you keep an eye out for those videos I am very much excited to make these for the new season but that's for another video but so far the printer has been great and I haven't had any issues with it and I'm very excited to see what else I can make with it in the future thank you again frozen for sending me this printer to use in some videos uh, let's get back to the blue beetle build and see just how nice this helmet came out and spoiler alert it came out pretty good This is the tightest helmet I've ever printed. I cannot believe how perfectly this fits my head. Um, good thing there's no electronics going into it, um, but I mean, it is just good job scaling DO3D. So this is the Blue Beetle at 100% scale. Um, can't wait to get the magnets in there. Uh, I'm definitely gonna need to be careful drilling the holes out for them because I did crack. Ooh. We're good. Um, I did crack, oh, thank God for the rubber floors, the um, insert on my Mark 41 resin printed helmet by them. So I really wanna be careful about putting the magnet inserts in here. Um, the mask, everything lines up really nicely. Like, oh, I, I love resin. Look at that, look at that fit. That looks great. Um, so this is the size of my head. That is fantastic. So 
Gonna do a little bit more sanding on it. There was some weird banding and scarring on the back of the helmet here, um, but it, two things. A, it's the back of the helmet. Not a lot of people are gonna see that. It's gonna be a display piece. I'm not too concerned about it. And B, I can drag these lines back in. As I sand this down, I'll hit it with the first coat of primer, um, maybe some Bondo spot putty in there. I'm not overtly concerned about it. You can actually see kind of where it left it inside. I'm still learning resin printing. This isn't a fault of the printer. It's how I sliced it. It's just a lot going on there. Um, now that I'm thinking about it, I, oh, it made a suction cup. I know what, I know exactly why that happened. So that's my fault, but the front still survived. Everything fits. So we're going to press on, get a, um, a little bit of sanding done. I'll probably do some wet sanding um, with 500 grit and uh, we'll hit it with some primer and see what we're looking at. But this should be a pretty quick build and this looks, um, this looks pretty cool. Okay, so it's time to add the magnets into the slots before we start really painting um, and getting everything set up. Luckily, it being a resin print, these uh, the magnet holes are strikingly perfect. All I'm doing is taking the stack and just forcing them in and they stay in there really, really nicely. Um, I could put a dab of super glue on the other side but this is working well enough. And if I lose a few over time, they're just gonna get stuck to the other side. Of, you know, they're not gonna fall out. They're just gonna come off with the jaw of the magnet. But I'm gonna see how well this works. And if they don't push in enough, I'm taking just something blunt and just forcing them down in there. Um, just be careful with resin, because obviously you can crack it. If this was PLA, I would take a soldering iron and actually kind of heat up the hole a little bit. Never heat up the magnets. That's how you lose the magnetism on them. I think if they hit 70 degrees Celsius, they lose their, um, their magnetism. It's something like that. So don't heat the magnets in and try to push them in. Always heat the thing you're pushing it into. And then even, even still, it's a little risky. But I'm just forcing them in and it's working out great. So I'm going to keep on keeping on with this. Go around the whole thing and get everything assembled. All right, it sticks together really well. I didn't use all of the tiny magnets inside the eyes because they, they don't need them. Um, it's a little bit of an overkill. So they stick in there just fine. This is so cool. I've never had a helmet like assemble this smoothly. Um, the only issue I'm still having is with the mask. Uh, the way it wants to wrap around the widow's peak, it's just not playing perfectly well, but I'm still okay with it. Let's see, that goes there. Let's see if I can get this thing on my head. That looks so good, oh my God. So far, so good. I can't move my jaw. Um, I think it's time to start sanding this and get it into paint. Whew. Hey, it's a voiceover. So I apologize. I kind of glanced over this part of the video and I was just, I was in a rush for this build. I'm sorry. So I went and sanded the helmet very lightly with 220 grit sandpaper on the spots that had the most scarring from the supports. Now, if you want a more detailed tutorial on sanding and smoothing prints, you can either go check out some of my other videos or the recent Mandalorian video I just uploaded has a lot of post-processing information, especially if you're doing an FDM plastic print. But in the case of resin, you really don't need anything below a 220 grit. And I only did that on the heavy spots, on the mask, on the eyes, on the jaw. I did a very quick scuff of 500 grit sandpaper and I didn't even use wet sandpaper. It was just a light rubbing of it, got it as smooth as possible and it was already pretty smooth. And I'm using a very light coat of Duplicolor sandable primer. There's no reason to use filler primer on this. You do not need to fill in layer lines on this. So take your time, do a nice dust coat of this primer. I love this stuff. It plays so well with resin prints. And once the dust coat was done, you start going on a little bit heavy and then you just go back and forth between what you need to sand and this primer coat. Once you're happy with that stage, it's time to move on to the color. So now for the color. 
In this case, I was using a flat Krylon black paint because that's the color the mask was going to stay. However, since I was going to be moving into metallics like the metallic blue, I wanted to make sure everything had a nice um, base coat of black. It just makes the silvers and the blues, every, it makes everything play a lot better, but make sure you're testing out your paints. So the mask was coming out in a flat black and I'm gonna throw a top coat over this, but already with what, three, four coats of primer and paint, this mask already looks beautiful. Now, when using metallic colors, I see people make this mistake all the time. They use chrome as a base coat, like the Rust-Oleum metallic colors. It is not a silver base coat, it's chrome. You need to use a silver. So I just found some very generic silver paint from O'Reilly's or AutoZone. This in, in this case, it's a Ford silver. I don't even know what it is. Just make sure it's silver, not chrome. And I'm gonna, all the parts that are going to be blue, I'm going to go and just cover them in this silver, get a nice coat of it because it's gonna make that blue pop really, really well. Once I was happy with the silver base coat, gave that ample time to dry, it was time to move on to the blue. Again, very light dusting. I'm using it almost as a tint. You don't wanna to go too heavy on this stuff because when it runs, you're gonna need to sand everything back down, restart from black to silver to blue. So just take your time with it. And you can see just how well the silver is complementing the blue. If I was to try to spray this over black, it would look nothing like this. So just take your time with it because you don't want it to run. Let's press on and this blue was coming out so nice. <sighs> so it turns out I'm dumb. Um, after seeing some up close photos of the helmet itself from like the hero props, uh, there's a massive color shift and speckle pattern going on with this helmet. And though the blue I'm using right now, it looks really cool and I don't think anybody would disagree it doesn't look good, like I could send it how it looks. I want to try to get this speckle effect and I've already done some testing. Um, so let's go take a look at that. Also, I got glasses for the lenses. Um, they're pretty sick. Okay, so the helmet is sitting here ready to go and I've gone and dusted it with a 1K matte finish. This is the same matte finish that is on the uh, black part of the mask right there. And it, it, looks, it looks good. It looks really good. I'm very happy with how this helmet is coming out. But I've gone and taken a bunch of different blue paints, some color shift paints that I used on my Green Goblin helmet, and I've layered them on this metal sheet. And it's, it's hard to see in the camera, but there's different layers and gradients and speckles. I was able to match it, I think fairly well, and this is perfectly flat, so you're not getting any of that color shift angle that will be more pre prevalent on the helmet. But here's a little example. It's definitely a different color now, um, has a much different shine. So I'm going to start attacking this helmet, trying to layer everything up, and uh, we'll see if I can get it to look something like the, the hero helmet. Oh boy. So you guys are going to hate me for this, but I don't really have a good way of explaining how I did this paint. You can see the collection of paints here in the background. It's just a bunch of blues and mattes and greens and pearlescent paints that I've collected over time. And I was spraying them very far away as to let them mist onto the helmet and get that speckle effect. Trying to get a can of spray paint to sputter and splatter when you want it to turned out to be much more difficult than I anticipated. But this is a mixture of different blues. I layered on a couple speckles of silver just to try to build up those layers. I was also using a collection of pearlescent and color shift greens I used on my Green Goblin helmet. All of the paints I used will be linked down below, so if you wanna to try to get your own collection and do this, please do. But I was really trying to extract that color shift pearl out of this. And the biggest difference with it was that color shift paint, like I said, for my Green Goblin helmet, and then going over it with pearlescent clear coats and just dusting everything on. So definitely experiment around with this. And I very much suggest painting it at the same time. You can see I have the eyes right next to the helmet. Everything needed to be painted at the exact same time. This way they were getting the same layers, the same proper um, amounts of sputter and splatter. So it was very, very fun to do, but this isn't something I could just go and replicate 100% of the time every time. So take your time, experiment with it, and hopefully you'll get some results like this. This is the coolest paint job I've ever done and I'm super proud of it.
So once the paint was dry, it was ready to move on to final assembly, and in this case, the lenses. Now, I know in the movie he has these cool yellow eyes that move around, but in this case, we're gonna make it look more bug-like. I went to the dollar store and got some cheap sunglasses with polarized lenses, and what's really cool about plastic lenses that it is if you throw some tape over them and you take some nippers, you can actually cut out the plastic. Make sure they're not actually glass. Make sure they're real, just plastic. And you can trim and cut the lenses to fit the tape helps dissuade the plastic from cracking and this way you can draw a template on it you can see me here just going around cutting it to fit i sand the edges and then well just kind of tape them into the lenses and they work great Okay, let's see, can I get this thing off? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Hey, it comes off. <laughs> ooh, buddy. Let's just go ahead and slide that all back together. Would you guys just look at it? This came out so freaking cool. I love it. I definitely need to get some more shots of this outside. Um, I'll probably po be posting those on Instagram once I actually premiere this video. Um, but I do need to phone in this outro just a little bit because I am due to get on a flight in three hours to go on a cruise vacation. So this video is premiering while I am still on vacation. Hopefully I'm burnt and tan and just having a good old time and you guys enjoy this video. This is definitely one of the crazier paint jobs I've ever done. It definitely reminds me of the pearlescent that's on my Green Goblin helmet. Um, the resin print made it super easy to do. However, if you're doing it in FDM, again, you can follow basically all of this stuff, print it out, sand it, all of that. It's gonna come out great, just take your time. And maybe you learned something new in the painting process or how to get these cool pearlescent effects, how to layer paints up, how to make some cool eye lenses. I'm actually really, really happy with how those came out. Um, this is just a really sweet helmet. And I, I, oh God, I can't wait to post this video. And this helmet is gonna look absolutely great next to my collection. I now officially have four DC helmets. If you guys have any comments, questions, or concerns about anything you saw in this video, drop some comments down below. I do my best to respond to as many as possible, but I do read them all. And if you guys did like what you saw in this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. I have a ton of more videos on the way. This is going to be an awesome year for cosplay and building and tutorials and 3D printing. I'm excited. You should be too. But I have to go catch my flight. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. You have a good day. No. Ah, tragedy. It fell on the ground. <laughs>